Hey guys, welcome back to King's Outdoor Life. In today's video, we're going to go from raw wood to the sawmill to a finished coffee table like so. I've got two months worth of footage put together here and we'll see if it works out. Stick along, <laughs> click like and subscribe. So here's the impetus of this coffee table we built. Look at that, $899. We loved it. Every picture we saw had a similar coffee table. So we said, I can make one of those. Well, I said that, but I always say that. I think I can make anything, but most things I try to make, well, they just get thrown away. You should see the project I tried this afternoon. <laughs> it's in the garbage can now. But anyway, this project, I said, I've got some wood. I've got that white oak that I built the gate out of. I can do this. Well, I couldn't. I couldn't begin to do it by myself. But thankfully, I have very good friends and family, faith family, guys at our church, who can help me with just about anything. It's great to have friends who have big tools, sawmills, and all kinds of stuff. With my friends at church, we could blow something up, cut something up, or do just about anything. Engineers, you name it, we got them. Well, Ricky here has got a sawmill. Ricky gave me this white oak. And if you'll look back to my first few videos, seven, eight, nine, something like that, I can't remember, we built an old English gate out of this white oak wood that Ricky gave me. It was just sitting in a pile down by his sawmill, and someone had given it to him, and it was just sitting there rotten, rotting, I should say. Part of it was rotten, and we had to throw a lot away, but we saved enough boards to build those gates and had some left over. Those boards had just been sitting in my shop at home, and just getting rougher and rougher as time went on, and they were a little crooked and a little rough around the edges, so we needed what's called resaw those. Here you can see we turn it up on its edge and cut it, get it square and straight that way. We lay it down on its face and cut each face off to get it nice and smooth and square that way and get what we can, best we can, the most square boards possible. So all we needed here was a roughly four feet by two feet of boards but you always want to have a little extra because you never know exactly how it's going to work out. So that's what we did. We took these boards, put them on his mill, and resaw them. Love this shot with that Woodmiser LT40 coming right at you. I love sawmills. I wish I had bought one last year before all the prices went crazy on them, but I didn't. But thankfully, Ricky loves to run his and was nice enough to help me resaw these boards. So, this was a big, fat, gorgeous board here. We just had to take a little off each side, and it made a great board. Love the smell of sawdust in the morning. So, we've got these boards pretty well square now, and I'm going to lay them down, make sure we get the best sides here on this one he wanted me to kind of had to kind of pull it over a little bit on this end so you'll see me holding it to pull it tight against the things on the sawmill i don't even know what they're called that holds it in place while the saw goes down through and cuts it so you see me hanging on until the last minute to try to hold it against the dogs that's what they're called the, the dogs sawmill dogs so anyway that's what i was doing there so we got it in good shape and uh, we'll move on to the next steps. There is a, uh, that's a putty knife, big wide putty knife. That just helps you scrape all the sawdust off. And you can see what you have here. We're talking about there's a little rough spot in the board, but we're just saying, well, we can put it on the bottom. Nobody will see the bottom of the coffee table anyway, right? I got those boards home. Lawson and I ran them through the planer. This is a planer that I bought at Lowe's last year when I was building those gates. So it hasn't been used a whole lot, but when you have a board that's a little rough on the sides, the planer will uh, you know, obviously take off those rough edges. Also, it'll bring it down to thickness. So all these boards, after we re them on the sawmill, were around two and a quarter inches thick. A little more, a little less. So what we had to do was try to take them down to roughly the same thickness. So that's what Lawson and I are doing here.
taking off a little too much material there on that end of the board, but as we got towards this end, it wasn't so bad. So wash, rinse, and repeat, as the old shampoo commercial says. We ran each of those boards through the planer. So I'll run it and fast forward and just show you how we do this. You run them through, flip it over, run it through again. This is a new board, has set it back up there. The, the knob on the top, you turn it to set the planer thickness, how much it's cutting, and each turn is like a sixteenth of an inch. So half turn is like a thirty-second of an inch. So anyway, that's what we're doing here. Run it through, flip it around, run it through again. We did that to each of the boards till we got them all roughly, well not roughly, within a, I mean a sixty-fourth probably of two inches. I'm, I'm a rough carpenter. I don't get things within sixteenths or you know, eighths even though so getting something down to a 64th is a lot for me so next step is we got to carry this to my buddy mike mike got a wood shop that's his new hobby he's a nasa engineer it really is rocket science but mike here is just getting into woodworking and he told me one day if i can help you with anything let me know i said well don't say it unless you mean it because i'll take you up on it and of course he meant it so this is what we did sunday after church we carried these boards over to his house and we sanded them down Made them not even, you know, run them through a um, saw, a uh, table saw, to get them nice and square so we could join the edges. And then he says, I'll go on and do what you got to do. I'll get them sanded and everything, get them ready. So here I'm coming back. He's already got them joined together for me. It's great to have friends that know what they're doing. And uh, we already got this thing ready to go. So what we're doing right now is just kind of looking at the frame. Check out this frame here. Notice it's got legs that stick out beyond that I end up cutting off to get it to the right height. I paid $7 for this table, had a glass top, threw away the glass, so that's going to be the base. So free lumber, free labor, free help from good friends, and I've got a $7 coffee table. So what we're doing now is wiping it down with a rosin or resin um, to make sure we get all the sawdust off of it before we rub it down with tungle. We started on the bottom of the table, one, to see how it looked, but two, because we, we wanted to get a, at least one coat on the bottom of the table and, you know, in case somebody looked under there to, to check our work. But mainly we wanted to see how the wood was going to take the oil. So basically I've got a t-shirt that I cut the sleeve out of. Mike's got some shop towels and we're just rubbing this tongue oil with the grain and making sure we get it pushed into every nook and cranny of the wood. Letting that wood soak up that tongue oil and letting the beautiful wood shine. Look at Mike's shirt. Measure, measure, cut, swear, repeat. I told the guys in Sunday school I'm going to have to figure out how to blur out his shirt but his daughter-in-law said what's funny about that is he never swears. So the fact he even has that shirt is funny. So I didn't bother to blur out the shirt. We all know Mike doesn't swear, right? Woodworkers don't have to swear. They measure once and cut, cut twice. Or measure twice, cut once. Anyway, that's why I have to have help with these projects. But anyway, so we're getting the edges here, rubbing it down with tongue oil, and just making sure we get everything covered. And then we'll come back and rub it down. Check out the grain there. I'm going to show you. This is the bottom of the table. And look how good that thing looks. Turned out great, didn't it? Mike did a great job. What he used there, uh, after when I wasn't there, so I didn't get it on video, is after we squared this thing up and we knew it would join together well, he sanded it all down, got it nice and smooth, and then used biscuit joiners and put biscuits in, glued it together, let it sit several days, and then sanded some more to make sure it was nice and smooth. So anyway, this thing's joined together nicely. It, it matched up beautifully. And we were both very, very tickled at how well it turned out. So anyway, here we are just continuing to wipe, getting all the tungle into every, every bit of it, and just admiring our work here. All right, again, so that's the bottom. So once we wipe this all down, we let it sit for a few minutes. So then what do we do? We flip it over, of course. So one, two, three, flip it over. And look how pretty that top is. That's the money side, right? So what do you do? More tongue oil. And this time, since it was the top, we really put it on thick. So nice, thick layer. 
and look at that grain pop on that beautiful white oak. And remember, this was in a pile somebody was going to throw away. And since then, we've made two beautiful Old English gates out of it and now a coffee table. Look at that. Man, that's pretty. All right, I'm going to stop talking, put on some music, let you see it till we get finished. four on these table legs. They were about four inches too tall. But I mean, what do you expect for a seven dollar coffee table at um, some sort of like thrift store that they have at a local mini storage? I think it's people, uh, they don't pay their mini storage bill so they sell their junk. So anyway, one man's junk is another man's treasure. I needed to be shorter, so I got my grinder out and cut the legs off. That's what everybody does, right? Take your grinder out, cut the legs off. Uh, the way I did this here is I flipped this thing upside down on a plastic table. Love my plastic folding tables. They come in so handy. I used my, um, what are those things called? Clamps. My one man show clamps. Clamped it down the table so it wouldn't be moving around while I was doing this. And uh, cut all the legs off nice and square. Well, semi-square. Square for me anyway. After I did this, I took it out and spray painted it black because I mean you gotta have a fresh coat of paint on a new coffee table right so yeah got some uh, nice spray paint and uh, repainted it all black I think it turned out great alright so what I've done here is I've turned the frame or the bottom of the table upside down on the bottom of the tabletop I've got it centered measured it and I've already put three of them. Here's the last one. I thought I'd try it first before I did it on camera if it didn't work. I'm gonna take my nail, put a little indention. That way the drill bit doesn't wander on you. Drill a hole through the top part and then run a screw and the screw will punch through the bottom. And we should be good to go. And here's your finished product. Several months in the making, working on it when we could, getting help from my friends. Well, and almost all the work done by the guys that really knew what they were doing. But anyway, I think it turned out great. $7 coffee table instead of a $1,000 coffee table. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Click like and subscribe.